Today's scripture is found in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 15 to, through 20. And the word of God says, He is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he who is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is in the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This entire series of messages through the Advent Christmas season has been, this changes everything. What difference does Christmas really make? We just celebrated. We're one day beyond the big event. Christmas has taken place. What did you celebrate? What is it that was the focal point? Is it the baby Jesus in the manger born to be our Savior? That's absolutely correct. But what I want you to understand is that's only part of the story. There's so much more God wants us to understand about Christmas. In the world around us, everybody celebrated Christmas. It's been a fun time. But how do most people approach this very special day? For most people in the world, especially those who don't believe, Christmas is a day to party. It's a day to travel, a day to give and receive gifts, a day to eat too much food, probably drink too much liquor, a day to, to celebrate and be happy. And you know what? It's like so many other holidays, you get paid for not going to work. And that's the sum total of what a lot of people believe Christmas is about. It's just one more in a long line of paid holidays. But for the Christian, we do focus on Jesus as a baby in a manger. We do understand He came in the world to be our Savior. But like I said, that's only part of the story because God wants us to understand the full depth of what He was doing. Who is the baby Jesus in a manger? What God wants us to understand is that the Christmas child in the manger is God himself. Listen to what G. Campbell Morgan wrote about Jesus. He was the God-man, not God-indwelling man, of such there have been many. Not man deified, of such there have been none, except in the myths of pagan systems of thought. But God and man, combining in one personality the two natures, the perpetual enigma and mystery, baffling the possibility of explanation. Christmas is not only about Jesus' infancy, it is about His deity. God wants us to understand the extent of His love, that He Himself would come into this world and become a human being. Understand what that means, that God had to rise off of His throne, set aside His glory, and assume humanity into Himself. Do you realize how humbling that would be for God, that God would become a human being. Why? To be with us. People have been debating who Jesus is for 2,000 years, but the debate about God's activity in the world predates Jesus' birth. I mean, think about it. The Greeks and the Romans after them had a very intricate, detailed understanding of their gods. All the pantheon of gods 
were understood to be like us, men and women, human form, only more powerful. They were bigger and greater than we were, but they had all the failings and shortcomings of human beings. I mean, they were jealous, they were greedy, they were promiscuous, they were envious, they were even murderous at times. And when they chose to create human beings in the world, these great gods of the ancient world made us just like them, fallible in every way. Now, there are others who say that life came to this planet from aliens, and that's where we came from. Now, there are those who say that Jesus is one of many gods, or they'll say he was a, a great angel, or a great teacher, or even a prophet. There are those who even say there's one God, but Jesus was created to be our Savior. He is the image or the perfect reflection for us to understand God. All these systems of beliefs all say ultimately the same thing. Jesus was not God. But what does God say? Listen again to what was read by Bobby. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Paul says, this is who Jesus is. This is who God is for us. There was a little boy who was tucked in at night in his bed upstairs. It's dark. It's quiet. He knows his parents are downstairs, and he hollers, Dad, it's dark up here, and I'm scared. Come up here. Dad calls up the stairs. It's okay, son. God's with you. You'll be all right. After a few short moments, the little boy calls back downstairs. Dad, get up here. I need someone with skin on. That's the incarnation. Someone with skin on. God came into this world putting on skin, if you will, to be with us so we would understand who He is for us as our Savior not a created being, but God who assumed humanity in order to save us. We spend so much time talking about Jesus and His death on the cross, and that's right, that we've almost lost the understanding of the, of the incarnation of God into human flesh. With all the trappings of Christmas, we've almost thrown out the deity of Jesus with the Christmas wrapping. We've lost the understanding of how far God was willing to go to save us. And so the question that needs to be answered is why? Why would he do this? And Jesus tells us, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. John tells us, by this we know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. What you just heard read by the Apostle Paul. By him all things are created, both in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones and dominions, rulers and authorities. All things are created through him and for him. Jesus is the creator. He is God in human flesh. Why would God do this? If we truly believe what Jesus said about himself, if we believe what the apostles revealed about him, if we even believe what the Father said about him, this is my beloved Son. How can we wrap our minds around God doing this for us? What does it mean? Why? Why would God become a human being? with all the frailty, with all the shortcomings, with all the, the vulnerability, 
Like that little boy, I need someone with skin on. God came into this world to identify with us. He wrapped himself in skin, bone and muscle, flesh and blood. Yes, so we could identify with God and understand him, but why would he do this? There's only one answer that, in my mind, answers the question. He did it because he loves us. Wouldn't anyone do that for someone they love? How far would you go to bless the person you love? Is there any limit to the love a parent has for a child? Sadly, in our broken world, the answer is yes. In our world, men often fail at loving their wives. Children are abused and abandoned. Far too often, love is conditional. If it's convenient to me, I will love you. If it's not, then I won't. But God chooses to love us in an unconditional way. He chooses to reveal to us His heart's desire for us. He wants us to be different, and it was impossible for us. It's not like we could wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to change my life and be different. We didn't have it in us to do, and you know what? We didn't want to do it. We like our sin. If we didn't like our sin, we wouldn't sin. We sin because we like it, and we didn't want to change, and it was impossible for us to change. The brokenness of the world and the hurt and the heartache would continue indefinitely. The only thing that could change us was something from outside of ourselves, something from outside of our world, something that stepped into creation itself, and that's what God did. When Jesus was born and laid in a manger, He wasn't just a human child. He was God who entered into the world wrapped in human flesh. Do you understand what that meant? That God stood up off of His throne and disrobed and took off His glory and came into the world, if you will, embarrassingly naked as a child in a manger, helpless and weak and vulnerable. Do you realize that the God of creation, the one who spoke and brought creation, everything we see as reality, into existence by the very word of His power, that this God became dependent upon the umbilical cord and the tummy of a young teenage girl. There's not anything much weaker and much more vulnerable than a newborn human baby. And that, that is who God became for us. Why? Why would he do this? I told you the answer was love. But you see, love has a purpose. Love has a focus. God is God. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He is eternal. God cannot die. But God, wrapped in human flesh, God hath become a humble human being, is weak, and at times powerless. God as a man can die. The Christ child of Christmas laid in a manger. Why? So that as a human being, God could die on the cross for us. He could do that because He was different than us. Like us in every way, human in every way, but the difference is we are sinful human beings. He was the sinless Son of God. And yet He made Himself nothing. Made Himself weak and vulnerable so He could die on a cross and save us. What is the full understanding of Christmas? That Jesus was born and laid in a manger so He could become our Savior? Yes, but that's only part of the understanding. The fuller understanding is God stepped into the world, took on flesh, 
as a real person so He could die for us. You want to know true love? Then peek into the manger and gaze upon the face of God. You want to know pure love? Then look at Jesus hanging on a cross. Do you want to experience unconditional love? Then turn your face to heaven and ask Him, Jesus, do you want me? Do you want me with all my shortcomings, with all my failings? Do you want me with all my sin and all my selfishness? Jesus, do you want me? And I can tell you what His answer is. His answer is, yes, my child, I want you. I've always wanted you, and I will always want you. I've done everything for you to show you that I've loved you in the past. I love you in this moment, and I will love you forever. I did everything for you so you could be mine forever. Yes, my child, I want you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts 